We need to start preparing now for November. With the volatility in the air surrounding the 2020 election, we can expect more SHTF style events to occur in that time, and we can see a lot more unrest on the horizon here in our country. So start preparing now, and in this video we're going to talk about what we can expect come November, and without getting too political, analyze both sides of the aisle's response to the results of the 2020 election. Hey everybody, it's Magic Prepper, and today we're going to talk about how November could be the start of SHTF, or at least have a lot more SHTF style events going on around it. The reason is obvious because we're in an election year, and November 3rd is the date of the next election for the presidential on a national scale, and it's also going to be a time of turmoil for us because right now the political instability in the country is so high that regardless of who wins or who loses the election, People are going to be very upset. And the precedent has been set now for unrest, for civil instability to occur whenever people don't feel like what they want to see happen in our justice system or what they want to see happen in our legal system or when it comes to our government officials, if they're not seeing what they want to see happen, they are going to go out and cause unrest. And that is what we can expect come November. Now, this is a time that's different than any other. We're leading up to an election where campaigns have been stifled because of the pandemic and people haven't been able to go out and see who they're voting for and talk to people and have town halls and everything else. And we're also dealing with the turmoil and the unrest that we're currently experiencing across the country. So without getting too political, I do want to go ahead and talk about the SHTF events that we can expect and the reactions from each side of the aisle based on who wins or loses come 2020. Now really quickly, if you want to stay up to date on any SHTF possibilities that are coming down the pipe, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below so we can keep everybody informed and we can keep talking about it and make sure you interact in the comments because things are getting crazy in there and I love it. So let's keep that ball rolling. But what I want to say is Come November, there's going to be an election. We're going to decide who will be the president for the next four years, and there will be a lot of other elections as well when it comes to senators and congressmen and everyone else. So, what does that mean? Well, right now we're experiencing unrest across the country. We can expect more of that around the election. In fact, we can expect it to be worse. And the reason behind that is because People's emotions are highly invested in the outcome of this election, and this year has been so tumultuous that people aren't willing to just sit back and accept whatever's given to them anymore. Both sides of the aisle have their own train of thought, and if you're on one or the other side, you understand that. If you're in the middle, or you're moderate, or maybe you're a libertarian or something like that, you try to take from both and make up your own mind. Either way, you're probably not going to be happy either because you're going to get one extreme or the other. Now. The unrest is going to occur because each side is going to have a feeling that's associated with whatever the results of the election are. So let's say you're on the left side, okay? You're on the left and the right wins the election, okay? So what this is going to do is prove to you a lot of the feelings and a lot of the emotions that you're currently experiencing, that the country is fueled by hate, that it is fueled by greed, and that your life doesn't matter as much as those who are in charge, or your situation's not as, as important as maybe a corporation situation, and all the hatred and greed that has fueled the country to this day is now being uh, put back into the White House for you to see as being a justification of the way that things have gone for this amount of time, and a justification for unrest and more civil dis disobedience and more discourse. So. That's a very, very tightly wrapped, minuscule version of it, but that is a basic concept of why we can expect unrest if the right wins the election. Now, if the left wins the election, a lot of the thoughts on the right side of the aisle are going to put you in a situation of thinking that this was rigged, okay? The powers that be have put things into place to make sure that your guy wasn't going to win again. The pre-planned events that have occurred over 2020 have now culminated into this bundle of rigging everything to be against you and not in your favor, okay? And it's part of the pre-planned destruction of America and everything that's been going on for the last few months. And you're not going to be satisfied with those results because you're going to say, look, you know, we already knew this was going to happen. We've been talking about it this whole time and here we are and it happened. So either way, 
right wins, left wins, it doesn't matter. The other side is going to be justified in their feeling of discourse, their feeling of unrest, their feeling of having to stand up for what they believe in. And we as prepared mindset style people, people who are preppers, people who want to get ready for events that are coming our way that we might not have a lot of control over, have to understand that really there's no win in this situation when it comes to unrest that may follow. Whether or not you're politically affiliated with one side or the other, if your side wins, the other side is going to be very upset and vice versa. But more so than we've probably ever seen before, at least in recent history, because things are at an all-time high when it comes to instability, uncertainty, and even just civility. People are not willing to be civil to each other anymore when it comes to these types of thoughts, this thought process of your political affiliation being very important to you, almost like a dogma. And that's okay if that's how you feel and you're a very strong-willed person that is so concerned about your political affiliation, that's totally fine. I'm not here to talk about your thoughts of being on the right or on the left. I'm here to talk about preparing for November and the almost guarantee of more unrest and more uncertainty for our future based on the fact that either side wins or loses, we're going to see problems arise. We just are. It's just because of the way things are set up now that neither side is gonna be satisfied with the outcome of this election. And I understand why, but my point here is to try to get us prepared, to try to talk to everybody here about what we can do to put ourselves in the best situation possible for when November comes, okay? So for anyone who's not sure what to do or what we should be doing right now, we'll go ahead and go over some of that information right now. And what I'm saying is, these are pieces of advice. This isn't something I'm telling you you have to go out and do right this second, but this is just my take on how you can prepare for November starting now based on what we just talked about for the almost guarantee of some kind of unrest around the country that who knows could turn into what, okay? So one of the first things you can do, and one of the things that I've always suggested, but I know is not always capable for everybody, is leaving the cities, okay? Yes, you should try your best to leave the cities, but not just because of November, but just in general. If SHTF occurs, regardless of why, being in the city is generally gonna be the worst place to be. So if you can get out of the cities, do yourself a favor and do so. If you're not able to, I understand that. I know it's easy to say, just pick your stuff up and leave, get a new place, get a new job, whatever. Okay, but people have different circumstances. They might have people they have to care for that are in the city. They might be attached to a job that puts them in a position that they won't otherwise be able to be in by being in the city. There's a lot of reasons why some people have to stay in the city. And I understand that, I'm not here to knock you. I'm just giving you advice that if you can leave, you should, okay? But if you can't leave, or even if you can, you gotta make sure your security is where it needs to be, okay? This is a time where you should be going out and making sure you have the means to protect yourself, to protect your family. You should understand better than anybody by now that during an SHTF event, the cops aren't gonna be there for you, and if there's unrest across the country during the November election time, you can assume that they're gonna have their hands full and they're not gonna be able to come to your door the second you call 911 because those people are extremely busy at that time. So. Make sure you have that all set up, okay? And I don't care what that means in each individual person's situation, but you need to make sure that you have security figured out and that you're starting to prepare for it and getting training and classes and buying gear now so that when that time comes, you're not trying to stand in line to figure out what to do at that point, okay? The other thing we can do, which is important for any situation, but especially gearing up towards November, is build your community. Get ready to Talk to people around you, talk to your neighbors, talk to your community, your local people that you can rely on, that you can start building a network with and say, here's what might happen come November. I don't know what your affiliation is or what you believe in or whatever, but still we need to be prepared for what could come during this situation and make sure we have that community in place. Make sure these people are all signed up and that you're signed up to have each other's backs for when things do fall apart. This is an important part of planning for SHTF regardless of the upcoming election, but, how, but what we can see happening across the country right now is that November will probably be a catalyst for things that we don't wanna have happen. So build that community now while you can. Build it while you still have communications, while you still have the ability to walk around freely and talk to people freely and 
try your best to start planning for what everyone's role and what everyone will be doing in your group when that time comes and how you can expect to rely on each other, okay? And then the last thing we can do, for this video anyway, because there's a million things we can do, but I don't wanna make this last for an hour, is educate, okay? Get out and educate those around you. A lot of people, a lot of people, either have zero concept or information on politics. They have zero idea of like what's going on, what parties represent what, who says they're gonna do what, or what's gonna happen if this person gets elected. They have no idea, just to be honest with you. That is something I have found over the years to be a repetition. People don't know, okay? And the other thing is you wanna educate them on the possibilities of what could happen if things go south because a lot of people don't even think about that, okay? I have met so many people over the last few months who had no political affiliation or political information at all and had no idea what to do in case of an emergency. When this whole pandemic started, when everything started falling apart, People are coming to me and saying, well, what should I do? What, what, what things should I buy? Should I have food? Do I need to go get water? Should I have forms of security? I mean, it was incredible. And I'm glad those people asked those questions and I'm glad those people got the things they needed. And if you're one of those people, kudos to you for trying your best to, to learn and adapt and figure out ways to move forward. But these are things that we can be doing now before November comes when we don't often have this opportunity, okay? We don't often have a situation where we have a crystal ball and we can look at it and say, yeah, November 3rd, that looks like a pretty bad date in the realm of SHTF situations. And you know what? I think you can agree with me that things are probably gonna be looking pretty bad around that time. So that being said, let's use this time now to prepare for it, okay? Educate everyone around you. Try to get them to understand whatever your belief system might be or whatever you think your philosophy should be about surviving or being self-reliant, okay? Make sure that we build the community and we network and we get people together to understand what each other's roles would be if things go south. Get your security put away and figured out now. Get training. If you've never had a class or anything before, go take one, you need to. While you can, it's the best time to do it, okay? And leave the cities if you can. I know that's not possible for everybody, but getting out of the urban environment can make a huge difference in the amount of time you have to keep preparing and to put yourself ahead of that curve when things start going sour. So, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to bring up the idea that November 3rd, the election of 2020, is a catalyst for SHTF. Whether or not it's gonna be a long-term major event or if it's gonna be isolated incidents, I don't know. But we need to prepare as if it's going to be a big deal because honestly, if there's any time I can pick through the rest of this year for something crazy to happen, it's gonna be November 3rd. So make sure you prepare now, leave comments below, let's talk about it, let's talk about what we should be doing to get ready for the inevitable, and that's gonna be it for Magic Crap.